Ah, that's funny. <laughs> that's looking just trippy. Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and today I want to check out MetaHumans by Unreal Engine by Epic Games. Knowing very little what to expect from it, all I know is that this is a tool that lets you create super realistic humans that are ready for high-end computer graphics production, as well as for games, because all of their details are very scalable. So you can get the same realistic look, but with a smaller resolution of textures, smaller polygons. So yeah, let's have a look. After a word from this channel sponsor Wingfox and their new course, Digital Matte Painting Essentials for Beginners. I'm personally interested in this course because back when I was working at a movie post-production studio, I was a generalist mostly doing concept art or something like that. But once I got a task of creating a matte painting for a movie and I really couldn't do it well. It's like a completely different type of artwork that kind of needs a different mindset or something and certain key moments to keep in mind that I didn't really get a good understanding of. So this is the kind of course that would be interesting to watch to, you know, broaden your skills, your tool set. Because as digital artists, we really need to be able to work with any kind of media and photo bashing is one of them. I feel like matte painting is a good middle ground to start with. So this course covers a lot of interesting aspects of understanding the perspective, of how making different photos work together as a consistent picture. It includes a lot of research and good organization of your assets, as well as overpainting 3D models. If you find this course interesting, you can get it through the link below for $49. That's 51% discount for the full access until the course is fully released. So yeah, let's have a look. I'm actually, I didn't know that it hasn't actually fully released yet. It's like an early version and everything. And it's early access. So I like subscribed and got an email that I got the early access which wasn't hard or anything. But what I noticed immediately after I opened the session is that it said, now you have an open session, you have one hour, and after that, we don't know if you'll get another access to it anytime soon. So I'm like, huh, okay, so I don't have a lot of time. So yeah, pretty much this is what I've seen so far. This is all it is. I kind of got interested in Unreal Engine recently, so there is always a never-ending idea that I might be able to make a game of my own because I love games and I would love to do that eventually, but this is a huge thing to start, so I don't know. I just installed Unreal Engine and I wanted to make this video about MetaHuman because it's kind of fun. Oh, there you go, you're even animated right away. And this is not a video, you're actually moving around. No, it is a video, actually. What's up? Like, this is obviously a video. I see the encoding and everything, but I can move her around. So it's like a real-time streaming, like a Stadia kind of situation, I assume. Like a game streamed to your device that is being calculated somewhere else. Well, this is a human, all right. Yeah, the whole interface, everything is streaming. I can see that I'm looking at a video right now. This is so interesting. That's why... It's uh, like letting you in only for an hour, for a little while, and then other people get to use it, like sharing one bandwidth or whatever. I had no idea actually that it's working like this right now. So if they went through the trouble of doing all of it, like with the streaming like that, I assume it's like stop the animation to enable this panel. Oh, okay. Can I use some custom pose? No, I need to go exactly to the initial pose. All right, let's see. Oh, wow, it's actually not just changing the color, it's doing a lot of things. Cool. This is really cool. I wonder if it's AI powered or what, because it looks kind of like that when, when things move a bit intelligently, so to speak. Wow, this is so interesting. So this is just a batch of different types of details of the face. It's called texture, but really it's like details of the face. I like this one. Contrast. Huh. Low contrast. This is so unusual. It almost determines how much of the 
fat tissue is showing through or the um, other stuff like the the nose things and whatever like this the fat tissue in here behind the eyebrows roughness oh yeah so actually oiliness the way it always goes in any 3d software so roughness of the surface a little bit more matte looks nice freckles maximum freckles oh is that realistic i guess it is actually right let's go with the minimal then because they're pretty strong so yeah, pretty much the point of this is just um, like a character creation in a game, but on an insane level. I wonder if they'll ever let like a specialized version of this engine to be used at the beginning of an RPG, you know, like specifically, like it's all here. Why not use it, you know, specifically for a game? So you open the Elder Scrolls 6 and it's literally showing you this, but with uh, music and different background, but you are creating your character the same way, but then adding a very different kind of outfits, I suppose. But also there should be like green skin. Can I actually make green skin in here? Or it's only, yeah, it's just melanin amount. <laughs> interesting so it's purely realistic part of humans you you can't go crazy with it or anything oh wow i don't remember which one she had i like this whoa also it's interesting like there is obviously a lot of ways to customize this character whoa you can zoom in a lot <laughs> yeah but what if you want to you know have something even more specific but obviously using this as a base I wonder if like in five years after this release is completely and everything, you'll be able to like upload your own iris texture, for instance, to actually create, you know, the character that you need. Because right now, like, there's obviously a ton of combinations of how you can create this character. And it's hard to imagine that there would be two of the same characters, but they only can have one of the nine types of iris texture. That's not a lot. So many characters and many different things will have the same iris texture. Tint sclera. Well, it seems like it's all white. Oh no, unhealthy. <laughs> so this is more pure probably, or pure is in the middle. No, it's just like realistic in the middle. Like this, I guess. Ah! That's funny. <laughs> wow, it's legit like rendering like some kind of temporal bouncing light in there. Well, it's translucency. I think it's rendering translucency like that. So you can see this noise going on all the time. It's looking pretty good for such calculations. But I assume there's like dual 3090 Ti or whatever. <laughs> Those don't exist, but yeah tooth length oh wow okay over jet whoa what happened there i mean i like it this is so cool like realistic deformation like you don't have to use a lot of it but a little bit goes a long way in terms of you know making it look very real uh-huh some, some like squished teeth together when there is not a lot of space for them Really well, that's so much work probably to do all of this in a, such a cool engine like this. This is nuts. I had no idea there's so much controls in here. Okay, we have to move on. <laughs> so makeup, oh, I don't know. She's just fine as is. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> head. I thought I was working on the head. Oh, hair on the head. I see, so this is the whole department about hair. Long afro. Yeah, it has a lot of warnings like this on many of the details. It means that it's like in development, so it's only in super high resolution version at the moment. So you won't be able, that was such a funny appearance of this afro. It's kind of cool. It feels like they intentionally went ahead and made this animation, but really what it does is just it appears and then the physics turns on and it's so realistic too like can I test it can I <laughs> I guess not studio indoor man this is so crazy how like this is such a flex of unreal engine 
insane. I mean, it would be a much more impressive flex if it would be actually rendering on my computer, but I just have GTX 1080. I don't think it would work that great. And here it's just like, whatever. You know, use whatever you want. Oh, silhouette, I see. Oh, cool, they have my hair too. So it's actually just choosing from the existing hairs. So this is one of the things that may probably be improved in the future because this is just selecting presets. What I feel about it right now is like this is the weakest part of like, you know, being able to create a variety of characters because hair makes for a lot of the appearance. And if we just have this amount of hairs, you almost have this amount of characters. Like you, you can easily recognize any metahuman character by just memorizing these specific hairstyles. So I assume they will probably in the future change that. Wait, there's more going on in here. What's blend? Blend with other, other models. Okay, that makes sense since they're all just Whoa, okay, there's a lot more going on. But yeah, that's in terms of proportions and stuff like that. This is so cool. Yeah, this is not emotion, so this is not for animation or anything. I'm not opening the mouth in here. Yeah, I'm just changing its shape. Uh, when did she become like a man? <laughs> like, obviously like facial hair in here going on. Probably when I chose the, the skin, the texture, right? So I just chose a male texture for the face. It was weird that I liked it. Whoa, this is intense. They're young, young and fresh. Wow, this is giving me... S oh no, 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 it, it don't freeze. All right. Man, this is so weird. This, this is like completely relying on my internet connection right now. Whoa. So I was going to say before this started that it was giving me a very strong vibe of Detroit Become Human, like with this short haircut and generally the outfit and the fact that this is super realistic graphics. That game had a very similar character. Oof, it's getting really rough. Download, of course, you're updating Grand Theft Auto V. Thank you. I knew something was downloading for sure. Come on, look alive. <laughs> so yeah, I wonder if the final release, I haven't like looked it up or anything. I wonder if final release would be actually a piece of software that you download and use. The only thing is I assume it's not just about that it's really hard to, you know, calculate that like you need a very powerful computer. Since most people that create graphics, they still have pretty powerful computers if you're working on something, but it's also, it probably takes like an insane amount of space. <laughs> so you just download it as like several Call of Duties because the resolution is insane and there's like all of, all the versions as well. Look at that, like tiny hairs and everything. All these textures are insane resolution. And it's only gonna get much, much bigger with time because they're, they're gonna be adding more and more stuff. Boom, baby. Average, short, tall, tall, and powerful, tops. Okay, so yeah, the clothing definitely hints on the fact that there will be just a much broader variety of things. Generally with clothing, I'm not even sure, I'm not sure what their goal is about it, you know? Like at which point it kind of makes no sense to just add all the possible clothing in the world, you know? What's interesting, you can actually choose colors for it. That's kind of awesome. All right. What are the other kinds? This is just male clothing, pretty much. I wonder if it's based on something that I chose before. Probably not, because I have all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> it probably doesn't uh, change the selection, so we only have this basic clothing so far. Well, this is kind of a female clothing, like on the thumbnail, you can see it. I think it looks, yeah, yeah, like this is a female kind of sweater. And one unisex stuff, I see. So yeah, this is indeed so far more of a demo. Obviously, you can make a lot of cool stuff with it that would be actually useful. But the concept is obviously about having way, way more stuff. Man, this really can go a lot of places, you know, like in terms of 
we have AI right now where you can like draw a face and then it turns it into a photorealistic face. Imagine like turning on a special drawing mode for clothing, you know, and then just drawing the outlines or like drawing the kind of pants that you want. And then AI actually builds that model of that kind of pants. <laughs> that would be so cool. Like, and it's going to happen eventually. Maybe not in within the next five years. Maybe this is not exactly the way they would want to develop this thing so far. Maybe they'll introduce like the ability to upload your own stuff, like your own models, and then it would be like intelligently adapting it to the model. Maybe, maybe uh, some tools like this kind of tools, but for the clothing to fit it properly, you know, any kind of clothing you want. That would be real cool. Also, I don't know about hair, some kind of brooming tools to create any haircut you want, you know, this can go all kinds of ways. It's really cool. Mm, there you go. And finally, shoes. But yeah, like really one thing that makes you think right away is that the level of fidelity is so high. Like there is no like it needs to have the same level of customizability. Like I want different ankles on this character right now, maybe, you know, but that's just because there are so much polygons on those ankles. <laughs> like introduce variety to literally anything because, because there's so much detail. Ooh, I don't know. Well, again, it's just being streamed, so it, it, it will work. I wonder why wasn't it turned on by default? Whoa, that's so cool. Height is also pretty cool. Epic is just a bit higher sampling or something, maybe more bounces of light. But yeah, this is like very different lighting. Used to be like this. Yeah, this looks more gamey. And in here, things immediately become a lot more real. That soft shadow is so cool. But yeah, like no noisy stuff going on in here. And now noisy stuff is in here. Yeah, actually, this is really fun. So LOD7. <laughs> so this is what this character would look like at the farthest distance in a game, right? I can't even zoom out that far away where it would make sense. Six, a bit more, five, still not working in, at this distance, I think. But mostly because of the beard and the hair, like hair is failing. Everything else looks totally fine at this distance. In here, we have fingers problem, obviously. Oh, at six as well. So yeah, five at this distance looks already totally fine. But the only problem is the hair. You can see it too much. It's too high contrast. And four is already, well, it's pretty high detail, like a pretty low level of polygons on the hair. So yeah, maybe at this distance, like LOD four looks about fine for a game. But if it's the main character, maybe three would be better even. But for a close up for any kind of dialogue, it would be either two, or even LOD one. Well, yeah, LOD one for this kind of close up. For this kind of close up, LOD two, not really like it's changing quite a lot. I think when we like looking at parts of a character, it's at least LOD one. So obviously this stuff, you shouldn't just softly zoom in to see LOD zero. I think it's like when you are switching to incredibly dramatic close up, you want to see instead of this, you want to see this. Yeah, that hair is so like, this doesn't look like a game at all. <laughs> but LOD one, this could be a game, like it looks a bit more straightforward, you know? This is looking super cool. Okay, I want to try blending. Whoa, actually doing it like this is kind of fun. And what do I do? I tap to enable blend mode in the viewport. Drag three of the presets below into the slots above. All right then. And, and now I just move between the three. Whoa, that's so cool. Oh, good. I thought it was going to be one eye at a time. Really nice. So yeah, it's again like Art Breeder, but actually 3D. Well, I mean, it's very curated and 
a result of hard work of huge amount of artists and programmers, not just, you know, blending some stuff found online. It's all specifically made for the project. It's a bit of a different thing, but still, like, it's so cool. I wonder, like, if it's actually using deep learning or anything like that to blend textures or models somehow. Because I'm not sure, like, it's probably not really changing the topology when I'm changing the proportions or blending different stuff. It's just stretching polygons around. Well, stretching, moving them around. One hour maximum. You have a few minutes left before the current session ends. Oh, no. Well, yeah, I pretty much looked at everything I wanted to look at. I wonder what this is. Toggle clay material. Oh, okay, so this is just viewing things. Hide hair. Nice. Well, yeah, this is this is really awesome. <laughs> Hilarious. So what about sculpt? Oh, there you go. This is individual controls. So it's interesting. It's like balancing between what I do and what is possible to do. And that's kind of fun. Wow. Yeah, there's definitely some intelligent stuff going on here. Look at that. It's not just moving it. It's switching between different ears all the time. That's looking just trippy. It's just different different ears morphing into each other all the time. Really feels like some weird trip. Well, this was a lot of fun. So I wonder, like, early access, I don't think I can, like, export it or anything, right? Uh-huh, this is, like, different animations I can turn on. Body technical ROM, so to see how the body moves. Ada. Oh, that's her name. Borada. Seems like I can't download it or anything. What is interesting, though, is that... There you go. It's the session ended. So this is how it works at the moment, like a demo. A really cool demo for what it is. But what's interesting, they actually allow you to give it a try with different stuff. Like Digital Human, I think it was released earlier. I'm not sure if I can open uh, the actual MetaHumans project. I think it will be compiling shaders for like forever. I'll definitely be doing more videos on Unreal Engine in somewhat of a like broader whatever, like this is what you can do with, with it or something like that. I'll try not to nerd out too much about it. Oh my god, there's another person behind it. It's so creepy. <laughs> yeah, this is just a, a way to taste what MetaHumans actually looks like and the way it works in real time in my system, like rendered on my machine. So this is like a game right now. I don't like it doesn't have animations maybe with it, but you can see how these graphics and everything totally works. And aside from it, there's a lot more amazing stuff available for the developers on Unreal Engine. I also want to give a good try to Quixel Megascans to see how it works. Because generally, I'm really interested in Unreal Engine because it's one of those tools that I feel like in 10 years or something, everyone will have it and use it to a certain extent. At a certain point in the future, we all will be like creating some kind of games instead of just shooting photos and videos and, you know, doing stuff like that. The creation of interactive movie, like interactive world, will be possible at a certain point. And this is like making huge steps towards that. This is a tool that will be relevant for everyone. And I'm really curious specifically about Unreal Engine 5 because I really feel like they're, they made a lot of changes where you can create a pretty solid game almost without being a programmer, which is really interesting to me. I want to dive into that a little bit in the near future to see how it actually works. And what's really cool about Unreal Engine in general is that the license of it is so cool that right now I was using all these tools and I can actually create some kind of game. Like there are presets for games and everything kind of like this. I really fancy the idea of a third person game lately. And 
you can legit, like, this is a game, I adapted it a bit, like, changed the way the camera works around the character and everything. And what's really cool, you can actually try it immediately, right in the viewport, and actually use a controller and everything, and it works so cool, like, you can jump and everything. This is such a cool tool, like, obviously this is a preset, so someone made this whole thing to work already, but... Like, it, it's a preset for a third-person game. You can replace the character. Obviously, you have to know how to create models, how to build the level in general, how to create certain actions and how they trigger all, all of that stuff. You know, animation is really hard to adapt for gaming because you need to break it down into cycles and everything. That's all I know about. Like, it also needs to, like, realistically blend one into another. That's probably a lot of stuff to think about. But I, I think I'm expecting to see a lot of tools that just let you pretty much paste in the animations you prepare in Blender, also a free software, you know, and just put it in here and you get your custom third-person game. And all of that you do for free until you, like, upload it to Steam or something. And that's where you start make money and only then Epic Games takes a share of that. And that's it, so you don't have to invest any budget into it. It will just work. So yeah, this is it. A very interesting topic to me, really interesting to dive into uh, the whole real-time graphics and interactive stuff. Games and, you know, creating things that are like worlds and interactive experiences your way. I think this is very interesting, something that anyone can have fun with. I hope you guys are somewhat interested in checking this out. But yeah, for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Huh. Okay, um, I think this default level demonstration would make a bit more sense if the character wouldn't be able to just jump where the steps lead. <laughs> At least the steps would make sense, you know?